anteriormente en los tres de West Memphis. Out of the hundred or more people that y'all talked to, are you aware of anybody other than the defendant who told you one of the victims that had their genitals removed and one of them had cuts to the side of the face and had been some grabbing of the ears? Uh, there was no one else that mentioned those particular injuries and you yourself, Mr. Fogelman, you're pointing to the wrong side of the cheek. Oh. <laughs> And the thing that really bothers me is the ligature, what was used to tie up the, the victims. Now, he certainly knows the difference between uh, shoelaces and a rope. How long did they leave him there tied up on that ditch bank before they decided to kill him? I mean, what were they doing to him? Was he, was he conscious or unconscious? Did he watch the other two boys get cut? They took his little manhood before he even knew what it was. And I hate him for it. I'm just saying this as a human, you know, I, I would, I believe I'd try to kill them too, if they ever walked the street and I'm still alive. I believe I'd, I'd be stalking them to do to them. Probably shoot them and then cut them up. I got a letter in the mail telling me that I was summons to be on the jury, and I didn't want to be on there in the, in the beginning, but I didn't know how to get out of it. This is a uh, enlarged photograph of the crime scene. This is the ditch where the bodies were found. Michael Moore was found in this area right here at the bottom of the screen. Steve Branch was found just, just behind where these trees are in the stream and Christopher Byers was found just below that body right here. This is Exhibit 22, which is the body of Michael Moore after removing him from the water. The way he was found. This is the body of Steve Branch. Steve Branch is the young man that had the injuries to his face. Is it a particular part of his face? To the left side. Of the yeah, there it is. <clears throat> State's exhibit 24, the body of Christopher Byers. And what kind of injuries did uh, Chris Byers have that you observed? It looked as though his penis had been removed. Just from where you were sitting? Yeah, that's why I had to leave. Why? Because I, I always, along with seeing my little boy the way he was, I, I always had that picture of what he looked like in my mind. But you never knew until now. You were worried early on that, that and you said early on, you really didn't want to know. But now you're hearing it. I mean, is it a lot harder than what you thought it was going to be to hear it? It's a whole lot harder than I thought it would be. It's like going back to my fifth and reliving it all over again. Um, State's Exhibit 67A shows the, um, the hog tying fashion. Um, the, the hands were hog tied um, to the feet behind the back. And this is a photograph um, showing that, the shoelaces. 
in that injury, um, you see it's, it's typical of a, of a belt injury. You know, the belt has a little buckle, and that's what the, the buckle, that's that little um, one that goes back and forth to left and right. That's the, the base of the, uh, the latch. Here, this red area here, this is the, uh, the shaft of the penis. And here is where the scrotal sac and testes should be, and they're missing. So what we have is that the, the skin overlying the penis, and the head of the penis, has been carved off. It's gone. It's not there. In layman's language, that I, I understand, with respect, his penis has not been cut off, has it? No, the, the skin has, has been taken off the penis. Okay. And basically, it would take some skill and precision to do that, wouldn't it? I would think so. Okay. If this was to be done, this dissection, where the skin is cut off, that would take a very sharp instrument, would it not? Um, I, I think it would. Okay. Such as a razor. Or a sharp knife. Or a very sharp knife. Mm -hmm. Doctor, if you were to do this with the skill and the precision and the knowledge that you take, how long would it take you to do that? It would take me some time. It would take you longer than five to ten minutes? I would think so. And that's in your lab? I would think so. With a scalpel? Is that correct? That's correct. Now, doctor, if we added to the equation that you were in the dark, could you, could you do this in the dark? You, doctor, could you do it in the dark? It would be difficult. Could you do this in the water? You, doctor, could you do this in the water? I think it would be very difficult to do. If you were doing it in the dark, in the water, with mosquitoes all around you, would that make it even much more difficult? I would think so. It would take you, it would be a very tedious task for you, a it skilled pathologist. It would. Now, isn't it true, doctor, that people have five, about five pints of blood? A little more than that, yes. Okay. Uh, now, if I poured out five pints of blood out here on the floor, it'd make a big mess, wouldn't it? Yes. And it would be almost impossible to clean it. Well, you could do it, but not It'd very, very easy. Very difficult, wouldn't it? It's not easy to clean blood. Okay. Does blood soak into the ground? Um, yes, it does. Okay. Doctor, with this homicide we're talking about here today, would you agree with me that this could have happened in one of three ways? These injuries could have happened in the water. These injuries could have happened on the bank there by the side of the ditch or it could have happened somewhere else. Would you agree with me that those are the three possibilities of how this could have happened? Yes. Okay. Now, with your knowledge of the amount of blood that was lost from not only Chris Byers, but these other boys who've had some pretty, they're gonna bleed as well, won't they? Oh, yes. Okay. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not you could clean up that amount of blood at a scene in the dark? Do you have an opinion as to that? I think it would be quite difficult to do, to have, um, Injuries of this nature without having any blood. I mean, that's, I, I would question that about the blood. Okay. Unless it happened in the water or it happened some other place. Okay. And you again, doctor, stated that you couldn't, you couldn't do this in the water. Personally, I, I don't think I could. I think they went out in the woods. They may not have been meaning to kill them. And then it just got out of control and Damien, I think he was the mastermind over Jason and uh, Miss Kelly. I do believe that. I do. When did you receive that night? On the, I believe it was on the 8th. I've got Jane, it's hard to make this out, January the 8th, 1994. All right, and who did you receive this knife from? I received it from, uh, uh, I mean, how did I actually receive no. it? Who did you receive the knife from? I received it from uh, uh, Joe and uh, the people with HBO okay. Productions. Okay. Bruce and Bruce Joe, and Joe. Whatever he is. All right. Yes. Upon receiving that knife, what did you do with it? I saw what I thought to be some type of substance on the knife, and actually, I did not know what it was. I in turn 
sent this knife to uh, genetic design? When the knife was uh, received by your firm, did you or your lab run tests on that particular knife? There was a small amount of what appeared to be blood um, that was dried or tissue in uh, a, a crevice on the knife where the knife folds when it locks. The results of the test showed us that um, there was DNA um, present on the knife and that we were able to get a type uh, using a test called HLA-DQ-alpha. And Mr. Byers had the same type that was detected from the specimen from the knife. Okay. And what was the DQ-alpha type for Christopher Byers? It was also the same type. So the blood on the knife and Christopher Byers' blood and John Mark Byers' blood all had the same type. Correct. Well, the interesting thing about it is, is that, that the, the, the one knife that we know somebody owns is the Byers' knife. We know he owns that knife. He's got the motive, his son, who he's upset with. His son was the only one mutilated. The other two weren't mutilated. He's, he, he's got knowledge about the area. He knows when the search is over with. He's big enough that he can carry the boys there and throw them in. He's a jeweler. He's precise enough to have, to have committed that mutilation. All of the pieces fit together with somebody in a different location killing the boys in a different location because there's no mosquito bites on them. So we know that after the boys were killed and during, they weren't outside. It had to be inside because there's no mosquito bites on them. So that means they were carried from a death scene someplace, unconscious, and brought down to the river. And they had to be killed shortly before they brought down there because they all died within a short period of time. So after they were bled to death, after they were bludgeoned and unconscious, somebody had to take those three, take them to the scene, and dump them. In order to do that, you've got to be physically strong enough to carry a 50 to 60 year old unconscious kid who's hogtied. Jay Jason couldn't have done it. In his best day, he couldn't carry a little baby, those little skinny arms of his. So when we look at this whole thing, all the pieces that they tried to put together, none of it fits with Jason, and just about all of it fits towards a person like Byers. Go ahead and Judge, if I can approach the witness. All right. Take a look at that nine And I will call that for identification purposes the John Mark Byers knife. Doctor, did you make a comparison with this knife, E6, and, and compare that with some of the wounds that you found on Chris Byers? Uh, yes, I did. Right. Does that knife appear to be a serrated knife? Yes, this is a serrated knife. Do you have an opinion if some of the wounds that you found on Chris Byers were consistent with wounds which would have been caused by that type of serrated knife? Well, some of the wounds that have the smaller serrated um, patterns um, could have been um, inflicted with a knife having this type of um, serration. How do you think this has gone over so far on the Mark Byers aspect? You know, we had suspicions even before the knife showed up. Do you think anybody realizes the reason for the three-day delay in Jesse's trial was waiting on that, the DNA test to come back on that Byers knife? I doubt it. And even after the results came back and it showed that it could be Mark's blood as well as Chris's blood, that doesn't alleviate the fact that he said no one had ever cut themselves on the knife. And it shouldn't have had blood on it at all. Well, do you think the theory, or the, the argument at least, that it wasn't that the blood was found on the blade, which could be easily wiped off, but it was back in the hinges that you normally wouldn't think, if you were wiping off the blood, you wouldn't think the blood would be inside the hinges, and that's where they found that particular blood. How do we get that in? Well, Just ask Gitchell? Ask Byers. I mean, we could put Byers up on the stand. I think the jury expects to see him now. Well, they want to see him up there. They want to see what he has to say. Don't you think so? I think so. Yes. Right, Mr. Byers, I need to ask you about a defense exhibit number E6. This particular 
folding lock blade Kershaw knife. If I could approach the witness, Your Honor. Yeah. Take a look at that knife, please. <coughs> Had that knife ever been used before? Used for what? Used for any purpose. I'd had trimmed your toenails with it. I had uh, attempted to trim on some venison that I had. Uh, you attempted to trim on some venison. When was it you attempted to trim on some venison? Some one time around the Thanksgiving holidays. Do you recall being asked on January the 26th, this is on page three, <clears throat> by Inspector Gitchell, had you ever taken that knife hunting or use it recently you remember being asked that question by Inspector Gitchell? Specifically, no, sir. He asked me a lot of questions. All right. Do you remember giving the answer, no, that knife had not been used at all. It had just been kept up, put in my dresser, and I didn't use it. And the reason why was because of the serrated edges. Do you recall giving that answer to Ins uh, Inspector Gitchell on the 26th? No, sir, I don't recall giving me that exact answer. I'm sure his question wouldn't have been asked exactly like your question was. All right, did Gitchell tell you, let me explain a problem we had, and you need to answer this for me. We have found blood on this knife. Did Gitchell ask you that question? I don't remember if he said there was or not. Did you tell Gitchell you had no idea how Chris's blood could be on that knife? Yes, sir, I would not have any idea. If his blood was on that knife, I would not know how it got there. Did you have any idea how human blood was on that knife? Well, yes, I would have an idea. I cut my thumb. All right. Isn't it true that you never told Inspector Gitchell on January 26th that you ever cut your thumb with that particular knife, did you? Yes, sir. It seems like during the course of the day, I did tell him that. Hey, was that during the, the taped conversation or was that after? I don't remember. Okay. On the top of page eight, do you recall being asked the question? I have no idea, no idea how it could have any human blood on it. Do you recall giving that answer? Yes, sir. Then do you recall stating, I don't even remember nicking myself with it, cutting the deer meat or anything? Is yes. that the answer you gave? Yes, sir. And is that the truth? Uh, at the time when he was questioning me, I didn't rem I mean, I might not have remembered. We were getting ready to go into a trial. Uh, Did you remember on this date cutting yourself on, with the, the venison or not cutting yourself? The date that Gary questioned The date that Gary questioned yes, sir. I might not have remembered it at that time when he was questioning me, but I could have remembered it later on in the day and talked to him about it. Okay. Earlier that afternoon, had you given Chris a whipping? Approximately around 5.30. And this was about 5.30, and was this with a belt? Yes, sir. Okay. And approximately how many times did you hit him with a belt? I spanked him two or three times. <clears throat> and in what part of the body did you spank him? It would have been just on his behind. Okay. Was his, uh, was he wearing his pants or did you have him pull his pants down? No, he had on blue jeans. Oh, okay. Myers, the judge back there during that last recess before you were recalled here says that you have a brain tumor and you're being treated. Do you want to talk about that? Is it true? It's been rumored since Corny. Yes, I have a brain tumor. And you were being treated? Yes, I'm being treated for I need to ask you one question, and, and I hope you won't get angry. But has this, this even the suggestion that you may have had something to do with the murders of these boys caused any problems uh, within your, your, your family or with any of the other uh, victims' families? No. They all, they all know the truth, and no. Do you have anything to do with these boys, Dad? No more than you did. Fogelman says you're buying a new house. Is that right? You're leaving West Memphis? I didn't say that. Fogelman did this morning. Yeah, you said that's why you were leaving. You know, we might try to move. Out of West Memphis? Well, somewhere. I mean, you would probably want to move. You know? 
Could you say where you're going to move? You want to say? Let me ask you a question, Mr. Sullivan. Would you want to live in a house that your baby died in less than three-fourths of a mile from it? I wouldn't, no. No, okay. That answers the question. Come on. You're talking about your whole family, though, right? You're not just talking about you. You wouldn't move and leave your wife and children somewhere, would you? Not if we were going to stay together, no. Okay. I mean, some of the questions you ask are kind of ridiculous, you know. I know you might ask them, but some of them are kind of odd or strange or different or, you know, however you'd like to comment on them. But some of them, it seems like you just use a little common sense and think about what you would do or how you would feel. Some of the questions you fellas would maybe or have to ask. Well, the only thing is we, we have to ask quote, them. We have to ask them because we can't quote ourselves. We have to... I know, but then a lot of times things are printed in the paper that people did not say in the news media. I'm not stating which individual says they got it from a confidential informer, and you don't have to turn your confidential informer over when your confidential informer is your imagination. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that's printed in the paper that people did not say. But the media has their rights to print what they want to print. You know, victims don't have any rights. Talk. I don't. I kind of had an idea what he was like before he talked, but after he talked, he wasn't anything like I thought he would be. How is he? I see him now as more like a human being than I did before. Now I see him as having a personality. Detective Allen, I want to direct your attention to uh, November the 17th, 1993. Were you asked to? Uh, make contact with some uh, property owners at the Lakeshore Trailer Park and also get with the Arkansas State Police dive team? Yes, sir, I was. And uh, after a period of time of, of um, searching, do you know whether any items were recovered? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Mark, for identification purposes, the state's exhibit 77 and ask if you can identify that. Yes, uh, I can identify this by my uh, uh, 11, 17 of 93 M. Allen that I put here. Where did I, you get the knife? I got this knife from a diver with the, with the state police. How long did this search take place? How long? Yes, sir. From memory, I'm thinking maybe 10.30 a.m. is by the time they got suited up and, and started, started to look. And you quit? You quit it? When? They located the knife at 11.35 a.m. That's all I have. Or 11.30, 11.35. About a knife. Are you telling this jury that this knife is the murder weapon? Or is that what you're telling this jury? No, sir, I'm not telling the jury that. Okay, now that we got to understand that. What day were these individuals charged? What day did you all charge Damien Eccles with this crime? Was it June the 3rd? Yes, sir. And what day was it that you were out there searching this lake? This was on 11 17 of 93. November 17 of 1993. Yes, sir. That's all. Fogelman had divers search a small lake behind the trailer park where Baldwin lived. That search produced a knife. And it had been just less than 30 minutes and come up with this, this knife. I mean, you, you win the lottery. The diver, he said that he was given a description of the knife and where it would be located. The press said they were told, and we have the reporter, Come to the lake, we are about to make a discovery. The prosecution knew the knife was in the lake. Nothing wrong with that. You have an informant. They tell you, oh, the crime was committed, and we know where the murder weapon is. They committed the crime, and they threw it in the lake. 
the thing is, that informant is of critical importance. They're the one who connects it to the crime. They're the one who allows you to say it was the murder weapon. Why don't you call that informant at trial? Why instead do you tell a lie, as John Fogelman did, and say, I just had a hunch it was in the lake? I think this case was never about justice because they knew we didn't do this. Fogelman knew we did not do this. Some observations are consistent with being um, inflicted with this type of knife. The only way you can tell if a serrated knife has been used is by looking for the serrations that, that rub across the skin. Arkansas is one of the last remaining states that has a prosecutor-controlled crime lab. What that means is, is the medical examiner is not a witness for what actually happened, but he is an actual arm of the prosecution. Dash, dash, dash. I think the knife that was in the courtroom was the one that was used um, on the buyer's boy. I still think that. There are injuries consistent with this type of spray pattern. These type of injuries we, we commonly see in the female rape victim, trying to spread the legs to the penetration. The anal orifice was, was dilated. It could be from, from putting um, in, an object in the anus. Those types of injuries we generally see in children who are forced to perform um, oral sex. There's evidence of general mutilation. This is the cutting in here. And the red is the shaft of the penis. Cutting wounds, superficial cut, gouging type injuries, multiple linear superficial interrupted cuts, multiple cut stab wounds, and cutting wounds. The knife is being twisted and the victim is, is moving. Gouging with a skin has been pulled out. Gouging tight, cutting gouging, cutting wounds, gouging wounds, stab wounds, cutting skin is out, the skin is pulled away, torn out. Those were the most horrifying photographs that anyone could imagine. Uh, those jurors were scared to death. Is it a coincidence that this knife is found behind, in the lake, hidden behind Jason Baldwin's house? There are marks on Christopher Byers where you've got like a dash where it's a cut, a cut, an open space, a cut, and an open space. And if you take this knife and do that, you can see it leaves a cut and an open space, cut and an open space. Now, if you take this knife, exhibit, defense exhibit six, and even with the slightest pressure, it makes a straight line. 